I'm going to review this EMF meter. Got it from Banggood for free, so check it out. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. So this is sent to me for free by Banggood, so thank you very much Banggood for that. We'll have a look at this, and make sure you check the links down below if you're interested in looking at this unit in more detail, or maybe buying one. So let's get it open. Comes in this nice little carry pouch. PVC strap on the pouch itself, not on the actual unit. And there's the unit. Okay, it's a pretty small thing. And over here are our instructions. Comes in multiple languages. So it's just a quick start guide. There might be a better manual online, not quite sure, but this covers quite a bit anyway. You have a pause and have a look if it interests you. I hope you can read it all. See anything you need to see, just pause the video and have a look. There it goes, different languages, which are no good to me, and there's other stuff I do. Ten miles, TM190. Oh, also comes with a certificate of calibration. And the reason I've got this is in my lab here, I've got a lot of issues with RF noise or radiated noise in my audio if I'm using certain setups on my recordings. I know I've got a lot of electrical noise here, it's got lots of mains voltage stuff on it, like all over there. I've got dozens, well I don't know, over a dozen electrical instruments there, all 240 volt mains powered, with multi-way power boards and all sorts of stuff, and a UPS and lots of gear here. Now I've got a lot of electrical noise. Also on that side of the room over there, probably about six feet away from where I'm sitting right now, there's all my Wi-Fi gear, all my networking equipment, all right, so it's in the same room, and so that's also putting out electromagnetic radiation from the radio waves and the you know two gigahertz, five gigahertz bands. Also not helping. So I wanted to get this because this tells you a bit about it. So let's turn it on. You might have to turn some more lighting down so you can see the screen a bit better. It's, the screen is actually normally easy to see. I can see it quite fine, but because I've got my really bright lighting here, it's a bit hard for you to see. Let me just turn this down a little bit. Still going to have some lighting. I'll just reduce the intensity a little bit. There we go. Makes it a little bit easier. So there's the basic display. So it gives you high strength electric field, electric magnetic field. And choose which kind of scales you want and that sort of stuff. It's got a menu system. Adjusted brightness, actually it might be an idea to do that right now. Um, oh, I've gone past it. That's enter there. Brightness is middle brightness. Well, let's bring this down a bit. Oops, oh, on. make it a bit brighter. I'm surprised by this reading right now, because I'm in the same you know, room as my Wi-Fi gear, so I'm surprised by that being so low. I mean, there's some stuff there, but that's probably my settings we've got right now. Let's have a look, actually. So you've got magnetic unit, RF strength unit. So let's go into there, change that radio. That's the default one that comes on here, is this one. So let's try that reading. Here we go, now actually seeing something. So you've got magnetic fields, if you've got you know, mains wiring, maybe you maybe you'll pick up something, let's try something. Let's put a cable nearby, will it pick up anything? Yep, there we go, let's get some electric field readings. If I had my cell phone here, I could show you the other stuff. Actually, I might go and get it. I'll be right back. Okay, so here's my cell phone. Got it sitting next to it. And you can see it's reacting to that quite nicely. Cell phones, they pulse the output on and off, so you will see it come and go. That's how they work. So I might just go back to the other scar for now, which is actually more of, more of I don't know, so let's see. The scale I found mentioned on other sites for like for safety levels, and you know, all the known safety limits, that sort of stuff. I did do a little bit of research on this. I a little bit. <laughs> just to know what I was actually seeing here compared to what's the real world problem. We have the internet on the phone. Let's do that. So this is going through Wi-Fi, here we go. Overload, out of range. <laughs> so yeah, it's ripe in the red. It's interesting to see what's actually, what you're being exposed to at what distance. So let's say we've got uh, magnetic units as well. What options have we got in here? Some magnetic units, gauze. MG and Tesla micro Tesla. Yeah, those are the measurements for that one anyway. Go back to the menu. And languages. 
what languages in here? English and uh, Chinese and probably Japanese is that. Spanish, get out of that one. Power off time, so you can set that to or stay on for a period of time if you want. So no power off or these times here. A preset, you just choose which one you want. I've got to set it three minutes. So I'll set the monitoring for a few minutes before we shut off. You can turn the sound on and off. Yeah, pretty obvious thing. And um, information. Let's actually look at this. I haven't looked at this page yet. Software version, version 1. Although Dennis is 1.4. That's it. Also, it's got internal battery. Um, it has a USB port on the bottom. I'm not quite sure what the function that is. It might have been a manual, I didn't read. Probably is actually. And there you go, there's the uh, cell phone doing another look up. If you're in an environment where you're not sure about what kind of noise or you know electrical fields you're getting, then um, this sort of thing you might need. You know, checking that sort of stuff out. There's not really much to say about this really, you know, it's as far as accuracy goes, I've got absolutely no idea. There's no way I can compare this to anything. I've got nothing else to compare it to. You know, I've got this out of curiosity. But it seems to give sensible readings. So on the magnetic field section here, it's got an X, Y and Z axis. And if you look at the back, you have these markers on here to say, you know, identifying where things are. And the X, Y and Z axis. Z is obviously from the rear. So Y is towards the top, X is to the sides. Electric field, electric field, RF sensing. And there's specs on the back there too. A bit of information, let's go a bit closer to that. So this is what I can actually measure, 50 Hz to 60 Hz for the for the magnetic field. And it's got the ranges there, what can actually measure. Electric field, frequency response 50 to 60 Hz. And the voltages can it's supposed to be able to detect, so it's like low as 50 volts. RF strength frequency response 50 megahertz to 3.5 gigahertz. All right, so it doesn't go up to 5 gigahertz range. So if you've got anything in the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi range, it just won't actually detect it. But it will get the 2.4 gigahertz range, obviously, and 50 megahertz. So it covers a, a fair amount. Not maybe not everything you want to actually cover. You may need to cover more than that. So the 5 gigahertz band would have been nice. 50 megahertz is kind of low enough. There's not much stuff below 50 megahertz which really matters. You got CB communications and stuff like that, or ham radio at 28 megahertz, and it's probably not really going to be an issue. So it takes three AAA batteries. It seems like it's a fairly nice little unit. It feels well made, well constructed. It feels like a nice quality unit. I mean, it does feel good. I still have a screen protector on here. I always tend to leave those on unless I get particularly messed up. And it's just automatically shut off after three minutes, as expected. ELF sensor. It, I mean, it looks nice enough. It's one of these things you, you just sort of have it for curiosity, and maybe I, some people are supposed to be sensitive to electric fields or RF fields. It tends to make them give them headaches and nausea and that sort of stuff. Apparently, according to safety guidelines, as I've read online. It can be something which you know, maybe this would be helpful if you something if you get weird headaches in your environments, maybe you need something like this. Just to see what's actually going on around you. I'll give you an idea anyway, I won't tell you everything. I'm gonna have a quick look at the manual now. So sound has got keys and alarm shark on this menu. I only saw it on and off. There are the menus I haven't found yet. Yeah, so there are some extra menus, but it's just about the alarms and key button presses for the sound. So you can use data holding as well. I mean, it does feel like a nice unit, so this may be something interested in. If you're interested in, maybe, I don't know, maybe you're a little bit like me, same situation where you're doing recording and you get this random noise in your recordings coming through the microphone system, you've got long microphone wires, maybe you want something like this to just see what's going on in your environment. Maybe you've got a lot of electrical noise or RF noise coming through from somewhere. Or like me, I know where my sources are coming from because I installed them. But sometimes you just don't quite know where things come from. You know, maybe you're in an apartment building and you've got Neighbours which have got a Wi-Fi router on the opposite side of your walk, for example, you know, you just don't know. Now, I wanted to investigate my environment here and see what was actually going on as far as the RF and magnetic fields and electric fields in this area. Magnetic field, not so worried about. 
electric field, probably yeah, an IO strength. Another thing you could use this for, I think, is for um, maybe microwave ovens. I'm not quite sure frequency run on though. Not sure. There might be higher frequency. You can check for microwave oven radiation. Actually, I might go and do that now. So I went and turned my microwave oven on, and this is the results I got. So I did a couple of pulses, did one there, and I turned it off, and I turned it back on again. And I did a hole so you can see the data, and uh, this is what I was measuring on it. That's from the front of the microwave, right in front of the door. So as you can see, there is microwave radiation leaking out of the microwave. Maybe you didn't realise that. Hmm. Right, so now, the next thing to do is to get a screwdriver and pull it apart. Let's have a look inside it. I've taken the batteries out already. Right, so, let's take the cover off. So it's just got four screws. Now notice up here, obviously you've got a little drill here for the sounder. But you see these screws? These are plastic screws. So they obviously thought about that in the design and realised, hey, you can't have metal screws up there because it affects the readings and the sensors. The bottom does have metal screws. So let's get these out. Oh, hopefully I can get them out. God, that's tight. That is really tight. Obviously self-tapping into the plastic, so that's fine. Alright, that's that one. Yep, yeah, self-tapping into the plastic. Oh, hopefully the top ones don't have the same problem. <laughs> Being plastic. Oh, no, that's easy. It comes out easy. Alright, excellent. One and two. So you'll be careful of these, so I don't want to damage them. So these are like two, probably two and a half mil threaded screws. Something like that. Okay, let's have a look. I've just got a sticker on the side. Warranty sticker? Yeah, don't need that. Okay. So the battery pack is obviously built into the back panel and it even has a little connector. That's nice. Let's pull this connector off. And here we are. Let's have a close look. And focused. Hopefully. Hopefully it stays focused. So there you go, that's what the inside looks like. What do we actually have? Well, we've got some dutters around here, which is interesting. A few chips, sounder, another inductor down there, some tantalum caps, microcontroller, obviously you need a microcontroller, dials and caps there. We've got some little panels on the sides, so see there's a panel there. Nothing on the top, there's another panel on that side as well. Also has sensor circuitry. Can I lift this out? I can. There's the display side. So not a lot to see on this side. Obviously it's got the buttons in the bottom there and flex on the actual LCD display. There's the sensors on the side. There's some tinned PCBs acting as antennas. And we've got antenna along the top here as well. Two separate antennas. Lots of circuitry in there, it's quite surprising the complexity of actually. Quite surprising indeed. So yeah, it's just the antenna systems, that's why it's got coaxial cable in there, linking the two together actually. Both sides are linked together. Let's have a close look at the back. So what do we have down here? We have a MZ2H837. So I point that out what I'm talking about. That chip there, that chip there, this chip here, don't know what they are. And same one there too, another one up there. Probably op amps of some kind. And then we have here, what is that? Is that CW0538? No idea what that is. There's another chip here. Try and get the numbers off it. Pretty damn small. AIC 1660GS, I think that's what it says. It's the best view I can get. Pretty sure it's AIC 1660GS. Pretty sure that's what it says. Another little chip disc down in this corner here. What's that? Focusing the paying because I'm really close and I'm zoomed right in. There you go. Is it ATU? 7AF, 
I'm not sure. It's probably a part of a buck converter circuitry or something, or maybe a boost converter, because it's got an inductor here, some capacitors and stuff around it, so it's likely a power supply chip. A bunch of other discrete parts. Some MOSFETs, possibly. C2N. Both of those, same. Little header pin here, interesting. Not that's for. I suppose we should look at the microcontroller, shouldn't we? It's an ST device. Yes, look at that. And it's upside down. Of course it is. Or electrons will fall out of stable, so. STM, where's that? STAS85. STM8S105. And it's also got a header pin there, so it's also got a programming port. So it's surprisingly complex. You know, the design looks good. You know, I can't really say, hey, there's anything here I don't like. Apart from the fact I've been touching the screen while I've been looking at it. Oops. Big inductors. I mean, these must be part of the antenna system. Very interesting. Anyway, that's what it looks like inside. Curious, isn't it? Let's put it back together. So I'll show that to prove I can actually do it. And prove it working afterwards. Well, I hope I can prove it's working afterwards. Never quite know. Actually, I'm curious before I seal that back up. Yeah, they've just threaded those holes. Those holes have got threads cut into them. So there's no metal inserts or anything, just they put a tap down it, which is fine. Yes, I wonder why I didn't do that to all of them, just have nicer screws in the bottom anyway. Would have been easier to assemble. I suppose they saving money by not having to cut threads. But if you do it on two anyway, you might need to do it on all of them. It's a bit strange. So yeah. Right. Well, that was an interesting little look inside. Certainly more complex than I was expecting it to be. Back together. You never quite know what kind of little gadgets you want around the place to, to measure things. In my instance, I wanted this because I was getting electrical noise and the microphone when I was doing the mailbag videos, like the tabletop, which I don't do anymore anyway. So there's not much to review on this, it's a pretty simple thing. But again, this is something which maybe you're interested in. I've seen these used and I thought, right, I'll get one. And if it's something you think might be handy to you or you're curious about knowing what's going on in your environment as far as your exposure to radiation, RF, it can be bad for you, especially over long-term exposure. So definitely, don't you get the links for this? Go buy one of these if you're interested in what's going on around you. You never quite know, do you? So thanks a lot, Bang Good, for sending this to me. Subscribe and click the bell icon and that sort of stuff. You know. All the usual drill. Share the video if people might be interested in this thing. Catch you later. Bye. You know, you never quite know what you want to measure or... I'm waffling lots, aren't I? Yes.